Christ is risen, alleluia. Christ is risen indeed, alleluia. Good morning. <laughs> Welcome to our worship this morning. We're glad you're here to celebrate Easter Sunday with us. We have a few Tree of Life members who are here, so be sure to greet them after the service. Uh, we had a wonderful 7 a.m. sunrise service. A nice group showed up for that out in the picnic area and enjoyed the uh, rising sun and the rising sun, followed by a pretty wonderful Easter breakfast made to order omelets from Chef Charlie, who absolutely uh, loved being here said that nearly all of you greeted him and he was appreciative of that. Special welcome this morning to our supply organist, Jonathan Jones, who is waving at you back there. So Jonathan is about 12, but he personally trained under J.S. Bach. I don't know how he did that. I'm just teasing you, Jonathan. You are going to well, you're going to want him to stay, so be manipulative and persuasive and, I don't know, tell him we'll pay him a big salary if he drives from Philadelphia every Sunday to come to church here. He is wonderful. His mom is here, too. She's waving at you. She is pretty in pink back there, so greet her as well. Let's see. Prime time meets Tuesday, 12 noon. Bizarre crafting or on Saturday at 1, 1 o'clock. Uh, the Lenten offering, I guess, is complete. You gather just short of $1,500 for Donegal Power Packs. So if you look at the bulletin, we were $8 short. Somebody here ought to be able to chip in an extra 8 bucks so Suzette can write, write a check for $1,500 <laughs> even, right? Do your best with that. Give that some prayerful thought. <laughs> Um, isn't the worship space beautiful? It is really stunning. So thanks to all those who offered beautiful flowers and who stayed after Good Friday and prepared the worship space. It just is a big wow. I think that is it, and now we will hear Jonathan share his gifts. Maybe the other alternative is to just tie Jonathan to the organ. <laughs> Stand as you're able. If you're able, turn and face the baptismal font.
Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the wellspring of grace, our Easter and our joy. Amen. Look, here is water. Here is our water of life. Alleluia. Immersed in the promises of baptism, let us give thanks for what God has done for us. We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning your voice thundered over the deep and water became the essence of life. Adam and Eve beheld Eden's verdant rivers. The ark carried your creation through the flood into a new day. Miriam led the dancing as your people passed through the sea into freedom's land. In a desert pool, the Ethiopian official entered your boundless baptismal life. Look, here is water. Here is our water of life. Alleluia. At the river, your beloved son was baptized baptized by John and anointed with the Holy Spirit. By the baptism of Jesus' death and resurrection, you open the floodgates of your reconciling love, freeing us to live as Easter people. We rejoice with glad hearts, giving all honor and praise to you through the risen Christ, our source of living water, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Look, here is water. Here is our water of life. Alleluia. We sing the opening hymn. grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all.
In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. This is the feast of victory for our God. Alleluia. Worthy is Christ, the Lamb who was slain, whose blood set us free to be people of God. Power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and blessing and glory are his. This is the feast of victory for our God. Alleluia. Sing with all the people of God and join in the hymn of all creation, blessing and honor, glory and might be to God and the Lamb forever. A victory for our God, for the Lamb who was slain has begun his reign. Alleluia, alleluia. Let us pray. God of mercy, we no longer look for Jesus among the dead, for he is alive and has become the Lord of life. Increase in our minds and hearts the risen life we share with Christ, and help us to grow as your people toward the fullness of eternal life with you. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and the Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Congregation may be seated. I'll invite the children forward. Let's sit over here a little bit, Caleb, or Nissa. Okay, I'll move down a little bit. <laughs> I'll move down a little more. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. Happy Easter. So, um, has anything special happened at your house already this morning? Um, yeah. Any visits from anyone? Two visits. Okay. Yes, Madison wants the tooth. She's a wealthy woman. If you need a mortgage, she can help you out now. All right. Ophelia, anything special at your house so far today? The Easter Bunny came, even though your dad worked through the night and is probably half asleep. Um, so, Ophelia, tell me one thing in the Easter basket. A Hershey kiss, chocolate, right? All right. Everett, how about in yours? Stuffy. A stuffy. Stuffed animal. Gotcha. What was it, Everett? What was what kind of animal? A, a bunny. A bunny. Nice. All right, Caleb. How about you? Any? Candy? You got candy. What flavor? Uh, 
candy. Oh, laughed happy. That is sacrilegious, you know. Laughed happy. Okay, Madison. I got daddy gloves for softball now. <laughs> Easter bunnies have bring such avant-garde gifts. Madison got batting gloves for softball. <laughs> okay. Um, so, Everett, why a bunny? Why not a horse? Why not a dog? Why a bunny? Do you think about bunnies in Easter, right? The Easter bunny, all right? So, take a look around you today. What is sort of special? What do you see up here that's different? Yeah, we have the butterfly banner. Oh, and the flowers. And the beautiful flowers. And we can have a way all the cloth. And we have more flowers. And we have more candles. And that big candle in the middle, where is that usually at? Usually in the back as you come in. So that candle, we're going to think about that candle. So. Easter. You have butterflies in your hair? <laughs> so uh, that Easter candle can also be described as the Paschal candle. Paschal. And it kind of means, I would describe it as the spring. Ever like little uh, bunnies, right? It's spring. Ants too are coming in the house. Um, how about the flowers? They're springing up, right? Everywhere you go, you see these beautiful daffodils. They're all signs of spring. This pastel candle is a sign of spring. Easter is a sign of spring. Easter Sunday. So that's as early as we can have Easter, March 21st. And then there's a full moon, and Easter Sunday is celebrated the first Sunday after that spring full moon, after that Paschal full moon. So all these signs, these beautiful flowers, the butterflies out front of the shoe. Good job. Go back to your seats. And our service continues with the readings. The first lesson is from Acts 10, verses 34 to 43. Peter began to speak to the people. I truly understand that God shows no partiality but in every nation, anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. You know the message he sent to the people of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. That message spread throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee, after the baptism that John announced how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, how he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses to all that he did, both in Judea and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree. But God raised him on the third day and allowed him to appear, not to all the people, but to us who were chosen by God as witnesses, and who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one ordained by God as judge of the living and the dead. 
All the prophets testify about him that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The second lesson is from 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 1 through 11. Now I would remind you, brothers and sisters, of the good news that I proclaimed to you, which you in turn received, in which you also you stand, through which also you are being saved. If you hold firmly to the message that I proclaim to you, unless you have come to believe in vain. For I handed on to you as of first importance what I in turn have received, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures, and that he appeared to Cephas, then to the twelve. Then he appeared to more than 500 brothers and sisters at one time, most of whom are still alive, though some have died. Then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles. Last of all, as to one untimely born, he appeared also to me. For I am the least of the apostles, unfit to be called an apostle because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am, and in his grace toward me has not been in vain. On the contrary, I worked harder than any of them, though it was not I, but the grace of God that is with me. Whether then it was I or they, so we reclaim, and so you have come to believe. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Hallelujah. The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the 16th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James and Salome, bought spices so that they might go and anoint him. And very early on the first day of the week, when the sun had risen, they went to the tomb. They had been saying to one another, who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance to the tomb? When they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had already been rolled back. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man 
dressed in a white robe, sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. But he said to them, Do not be alarmed. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He has been raised. He is not here. Look, there is the place they laid him. But go tell his disciples and Peter that he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him just as he told you. So they went out and fled from the tomb, for terror and amazement had seized them. And they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Be seated. Let us pray. Bless, O Lord, this word proclaimed, and we who hear it. On this day of Easter victory, strengthen us by signs of new life, that our words and the, our actions in the world would reflect the very presence of the risen Son, Jesus Christ, in whose name we pray. Amen. A pastor by the name of Timothy Atkins Jones recalls that the well-remembered words from Dr. Martin Luther King Jr.'s I Have a Dream speech, we all remember that, actually came from an old spiritual. He was quoting an old gospel spiritual. Here's one portion of the lyrics. Way down yonder in the graveyard walk, me and my Jesus are going to meet and talk. On my knees when the light pass by, though my soul would rise and fly, some of these mornings bright and fair, going to meet King Jesus in the air. Free at last, free at last, thank God Almighty I'm free at last. So a number of years ago, Kathy and I made the decision to have our ashes in urned at the cemetery in Old Stone Church in southern York County. This is Kathy's father's historic growing up church. It took me nearly a lifetime of marriage <laughs> to get Kathy angry enough at me to agree to my cremation. <laughs> but when her father moved in with us and we sat at the dinner table, he would quite often raise the issue of where we would be buried. And it was pretty clear that before he died, Ken, Pastor Ken Semft, wanted his beloved younger daughter to be near him in death. I don't know what he thought about his son-in-law. <laughs> but we'd talk about that, and Kathy and I caught on, and we talked about it ourselves, and I was kind of indifferent where my ashes would go, and it seemed to mean an awful lot to Pastor Ken my father-in-law, who was a saint among saints. You didn't get to know him. John and Nora and Lori met him, Kimmy and Andy, but he was, he was just a good and gentle man and a great pastor. Anyways, Ken and Joe are themselves cremated. Their ashes are in urned in the cemetery at Old Stone Church. And they are looking to the east. That's the preferred direction. So it is true that Kathy and I got the less desirable real estate. <laughs> We're looking to the west. So someday, Kathy and I will provide Ken and Josephine, Joe, some company. So I don't know, do you like walking through cemeteries? Some people don't get it. 
um, I happen to really love walking through cemeteries. I find it peaceful. And fortunately, Kathy does too. And so as we travel occasionally here and there, we find ourselves going for a walk, holding hands, going through a cemetery, reading the stones, sometimes remembering the people we love who are buried in that place. So we do that in Old Stone Church. We can walk through that old cemetery, and I am telling you, I think nearly every person buried in that church cemetery is somehow related to, to Ken, whose family grew up down there. We know all the names, it seems, including quite a few Lutheran clergy in that cemetery. And we do the same thing when we visit the cemetery in Nestville where my parents are buried. So graveyard walking, <laughs> as the old spiritual called it. It's something we enjoy doing. We started vacationing every now and then years ago on a beautiful little island off the coast of Bar Harbor, Maine, called Swans Island. And it is covered with old cemeteries. Many of the stones are so old that you can no longer read the inscriptions. But if you walk through one of those cemeteries, you're literally thinking in your brain about the stories of dead sea captains and their wives who waited for them to come home from sea and then they never came home, right? Children who died young, children who grew up on that island and died old, interesting stuff. So think about it. Way down yonder in the graveyard walk. Me and my Jesus, <laughs> we're going to meet and talk. I'm hopeful. Like his entire gospel, Mark's account of the resurrection story is the most abbreviated. It's short compared to the others. And in this sense, it follows the pattern of the ancient world in which short stories were the original because ancient scholars understood that the more you tell a story, the bigger it gets. It is truly like a fish story. Where is Butch? <laughs> it's like a fish story. Day breaks on a new day, the first day of the week. The women go for a graveyard walk, expecting to do the expected, the work of women, anointing the body of their deceased friend Jesus with spices to mask, cover up the aroma of death. They wonder to themselves about logical things, right? How they're going to roll that big stone away, for instance. Just observing as they get there that the stone was already rolled away. That's a miracle in and of itself. Inside the tomb, they are surprised by the presence of a young man. His white robe gives evidence of his status as a martyr. He understands why they're there. He knows the story of this crucified one, and he offers the first Easter proclamation, he has been raised. And from Mark's perspective, this is the short story. It's really all we need to hear and know. There's no embellishment. Mark just gets to the heart of the matter simple. The crucified one, he's not in the tomb. You won't find him here. He has been raised. Go and tell Peter and the others to meet him in Galilee. So the women get on their way as fast as their feet can carry them. Seized, Mark says, by terror and amazement. Today we come to the tomb. This is us today. 
We sit here in the tomb of this place. The aroma of death is masked, right? By the smell of these beautiful flowers. Signs of spring abound around us. In some senses, we understand that the events of Good Friday are more understandable because we all know that there are those who will do anything and say anything to preserve their power. And we understand that that was true in the day of Jesus as much as it is true today. We understand how religious power and political power conspire to crucify Jesus. We get that because we know that in our own lives, in our own world, it's just true. But Easter is a different story, and we are told to believe the unbelievable. Jesus got up from the grave. He's not here, and we are invited to go on our own graveyard walk out of it and to Galilee. So, what does it leave us with? We'll go home today. If you go to Jim Zook's house, he's preparing a lovely Easter buffet for everybody. <laughs> he took his third hot cross bun home just second. I won't tease you too much, Jim. <laughs> we'll go home today. We'll gather, maybe with friends and family members. Maybe at some point this afternoon, we'll settle into a little bit more basketball, Gail. I'm hopeful about that. But out there in the world, we will hear those voices that say to us that we are limited, that we are not enough. We are too slow. We are too short, we are too tall, we're too old, <laughs> we're too young. We're not pretty enough, we're not smart enough, we're not fast enough, we're not educated enough. Those are the voices in the world. I'd like to tell you what you should really do when you hear them, because they are not true. We are enough because God the Father has raised God the Son from the dead. And if God the Father can do that, just imagine what God the Father can do with you and me. Nothing is impossible with God. And I can do all things through Christ who saves me. God is raising the dead in you and me, as it turns out. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Amen. Alleluia. Our worship continues with the hymn of the day.
Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Rejoicing that Jesus is risen and love has triumphed over fear, let us pray for the church, the world, and all those in need of good news. Holy God, we pray for the body of Christ, the church, where the church is persecuted, protect it, where it is privileged, grant it humility, where it is fractured, heal it. Guide us all to embody Christ's love in the world, Lord, in your mercy. Life-giving God, we pray for the earth, your good creation. Join our prayers with branches lifted in praise and roaring waters of new life, that together we may proclaim Easter hope, Lord, in your mercy. Merciful God, we pray for all peoples and nations, free oppressed communities from occupation, exploitation, and abuse. Teach leaders your way of justice. Empower peacemakers and all who work to end violence and strife. Lord, in your mercy. Liberating God, we pray for people everywhere who long for good news, especially in Ukraine, Gaza, Sudan, Haiti, Baltimore, and elsewhere. Roll away the stones that keep people from living with dignity and wholeness. Breathe new life and hope into people struggling to make it through each day. Lord, in your mercy. Loving God, we pray for this community of faith and especially for those in our midst who have need of your healing care. Nancy, Connie, Maggie, Jim and Mary Lou, Bob and Peggy, Hannah, Evan, Addison, George, Brooke, Everly and Paisley, Butch and Jim. Hold them close to you and support them with signs of grace and mercy. Feed us at your Easter table. Fill us here with your wisdom that we may serve and care for others. Lord, in your mercy. Into your hands, most merciful God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your abiding love through Jesus Christ, our resurrected and living Lord. Amen. Congregation may be seated. Our service continues with the offering.
the vineyards be fruitful, Lord, and fill to the brim our cup of blessing. Thank you. We may be fed with the bread of life, gather the hopes and dreams of all, Unite the hem with the prayers we offer. Grace our table with your presence and give us a full taste of the feast to come. Let us pray. Risen one, you call us to believe and bear fruit. May the gifts that we offer here be signs of your abiding love. Form us to be your witnesses in the world through Jesus Christ, our true vine. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God for the glorious resurrection of our Savior, Jesus Christ, the true Paschal Lamb who gave himself to take away our sin, who in dying has destroyed death and in rising has brought us to eternal life. And so with Mary Magdalene and Peter and all the witnesses of the resurrection with earth and sea and all their creatures, with angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. The night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The risen Christ is made known to us in the breaking of the bread. Come and eat at God's table. Of 
price given for you. Body of Christ given for you. The 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 body for you. The body of Christ given 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 for you. Christ given for you. The body of Christ given for you. And take the bread. I'm another piece. <laughs> That's all right. It's good. The body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ given for you. given for you. Oops, sorry. Then we'll go to the back. We're coming. Yep. The body of Christ given for you. It's just grape juice. given for you. One more. It's right. The body of Christ given for you. given for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. Amen. The blood of Christ given for you. Amen. The blood of Christ shed for you. Amen. Thank you. Thank you.
body and blood of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ, strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. Shepherding God, you have prepared a table before us and nourished us with your love. Send us forth from this banquet to proclaim your goodness and share the abundant mercy of Jesus, our Redeemer and friend. Amen. Are there any closing announcements before I pronounce the blessing? Go ahead, Jan. Um, Thank you. Any others? There are a couple members from Tree of Life, my former congregation, who are visiting here today. John and Nora over there. Lori is pretty in her sweater and uh, you should greet her and um, greet them and only say nice things about the pastor. They know the truth anyways. <laughs> Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. The God of resurrection power, the Christ of unending joy, the spirit of Easter hope, bless you now and always. Amen. We sing the closing hymn. Hallelujah, go in peace, rejoice and be glad. Thanks be to God. 
Hallelujah.